friends, here's Ellen, your crazy baker, baker chick with another installment of Lunacy in the Kitchen with Ellen. No, just kidding. Well, no, maybe I'm not just kidding. So today we're going to make cinnamon raisin bread, a good old standard that a lot of people love, unless you're raisin haters, because I know you raisin haters are out there. And if you are a raisin hater, just make cinnamon bread or just make plain bread. Whatever you like is okay with me. Um, I am using my master butter dough recipe. And if you're someone who subscribes to my channel and been to my website, and this is a recipe that I use for so many things. It's wonderful as dinner rolls. It's wonderful just as a lovely loaf of bread. I use it for cinnamon rolls. I use it for coffee cake. It is just like, that's why I call it a master dough recipe because I use it for a lot of different things. Um, you can make cinnamon raisin bread with any kind of bread recipe that you want. I've just chosen my master butter dough because it is my favorite for this particular application. You can make cinnamon raisin with whole wheat bread. You can make it with my soft fluffy white bread. I don't think it would taste good with rye bread with the caraway seeds particularly, but hey, that's up to you. All you do is really add some cinnamon and some raisins to the bread and voila, it is cinnamon raisin bread. So like I said, I've chosen to use my master butter dough recipe. The ingredients for this recipe are milk. Now I always use half and half. And if you are in the UK, well, I'm not gonna get it out, but if you are in the UK or other than the United States, you might not know what half and half is or it might say it be something different where you live half and half is simply half milk, half cream. And people here like it for their coffee. My husband uses it in his coffee. So it's, it's beyond full fat milk. It has part cream and it just gives the bread a richness that I really prefer. But yes, you can just use milk. You can use low fat, 2%, whatever. I don't think the bread will be as good, but that's totally up to you. If you want to keep that fat lower, be my guest. There's also butter in the recipe. Um, so this has the dairy, the milk, half and half, whatever you use, one egg. And I always just slightly beat the egg. I don't, you know, beat it completely like if I was making scrambled eggs, but I beat it some just to break up the yolk. It has sugar salt, unsalted butter, yeast, and then if you want an egg wash, you, do, you beat up an egg with a little water, you use that, and I can show you that later. And of course, cinnamon and raisins. Um, and this today, because I'm feeling a little fancy, <laughs> we're not just going to use raisins, we're going to use your good old regular raisins, some golden raisins, and even some currants, which are tinier raisins. So just for a little spunk and variety. Do you have to do that? Of course not. My dad really likes the golden raisins, especially in challah. So I usually have them in the house to make stuff with that too. You can use whatever you want. Now, before we go any further, I want to talk about cinnamon. Cinnamon is a favorite flavoring, a spice. Almost everybody I know, I know one person who doesn't love cinnamon, but most people really love cinnamon. And they think, well, I want it to be really, really strongly cinnamony. So they put more in. Please don't do that. You might be able to get away with another half teaspoon. This is three grams or about a teaspoon. If you put much more cinnamon in, it can inhibit the rise of your bread. Cinnamon is not yeast's friend. So you can use a little and believe me, this should be enough. It really should. If you want to try adding more to your bread, but I do warn you that too much cinnamon can inhibit the yeast and therefore your bread won't rise. I'm going to go off camera in just a moment and put the ingredients in, but I want to remind you that before you start, you have to think about, does my bread machine have a preheat or a rest in the beginning when I press the start button? 
And the easiest way to find that out is to read the directions. The other way to find out if you don't want to do that, because I know we're all lazy, a little bit lazy about that, is when you set your cycle for either like white bread or wheat bread or whatever, and you press the start button, does it start kneading right away? Or does it sit for somewhere between 20 and 30 minutes before it starts kneading? If it sits for 20 or 30 minutes before it starts kneading, it is resting slash preheating your ingredients. My Zojirushi Virtuoso Plus machines have that rest preheat. To me, it is the most important and it's a non-negotiable feature for me. I would never ever buy a bread machine that did not have that. But if yours doesn't, that means that you will need to heat your liquid a bit so it's lukewarm, not hot. Please do not put hot liquid in. Your yeast will be killed. Don't do that. Don't ever let anybody ever tell you that you need the liquid to be hot, unless it's for some kind of a strange recipe. I don't even know what that would be. Lukewarm, lukewarm, not hot. Um, but I don't have to. I can put all of my ingredients, my milk cold, my butter hard cold from the fridge, the egg right out of the fridge, it doesn't matter. But if your bread machine does not have that rest preheat, you must soften your butter and warm up, leave your egg out a bit to come to room temperature and warm your milk just to about lukewarm. Okay, so we're going to turn off the camera. I'm going to put my ingredients in. Mine takes liquids first. Yours may be different. So don't put your ingredients in liquids first just because I do. Do it because your bread machine instructions say to do so. Okay? All right. I will be back to show you how the dough is going. I'd like to give you a little road map of how I put the ingredients in. Uh, first the liquids went in and that was the half and half or the milk and the egg. And then I put the bread flour in and the bread flour I kind of pour in going from side to side and then kind of take my fingers and smooth it. And then you can see I have the sugar on the right or on my right and the salt on the left. Um, the butter along the sides and then the cinnamon I kind of added right there and the yeast in the middle in a little well that you kind of dig with a like I dug it in with the soup spoon or sometimes I stick my finger in to do it. It's very 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 important that the ingredients are not mixed ahead of time. Um, the yeast can touch the liquid too soon and start to bloom before the, it's ready to. Um, this is just the way the Zoe manual told me to do it and the way I learned from other people and this is what works. I do not suggest mixing your dry ingredients ahead of time. I know that it seems very convenient to just spend a day weighing or measuring out ingredients and having them all where you would just dump them in, but it's really not a good idea. You really don't want the sugar touching the yeast or the salt touching the yeast or the sugar touching the salt. You don't want the, the butter. Well, the butter isn't a dry ingredient, but I really don't think it's a good idea to do that. And this is how I was taught to do it by reading my manual. So this is what I do. I did use the SAF Instant Yeast with a gold label for sweeter dough because I am making a sweeter bread recipe. It has 42 grams of sugar. So, and before I forget, my website, ellensbreadmachinerecipes.com, and you don't have to remember that, it'll be below in the description, ellensbreadmachinerecipes.com. That's where you go to get a PDF version of my recipe that you can print out and will be beautiful and you can put in your little notebook or whatever you keep your recipes in and it will be very convenient for you. I'm going to put this in the bread machine on dough course and I will check back with you. I'm gonna set my timer for 28 minutes. That's 23 minutes of rest, eight minutes of kneading, and then I check the dough. So I forgot to tell you. So now we're gonna prep the raisins. Um, in this bowl, it just this bowl from the butter won't hurt, I have about a teaspoon of flour. I'm going to put that in and then I'm going to weigh out my raisins. You don't have to write anything down because I'm going to give all of this to you in the recipe. But I'm going to put some of each kind of 
raisin or dried fruit that I told you about, regular raisins, golden raisins, and currants. And I'll let you know what the weight of that is in the recipe. And what the flour is for is I'm going to toss them in this flour really, really well. So they're all kind of have a little coating of flour, but you don't need much. Um, and that will prevent the raisins from sticking to each other and allow them to more evenly distribute. So here are the combination of golden raisins, regular raisins, and currants here. There is one of each. <laughs> and you can see I've tossed them, and, and the amount of flour is only about one gram of flour. It's just a tiny little bit. You just kind of do this a bit to um, make sure they're coated because there is an age-old problem of raisins not distributing super well. So this is the trick. So after the add beep, it'll be about, I think about nine more minutes, or no, I'm sorry, I take that back. After the five minutes of kneading, when I check the dough to make sure it isn't too wet or too dry, I think it's about nine more minutes and then I get the add beep. The 23 minutes of rest and five minutes of kneading has passed. Now we're going to check the dough to see if it's too wet, too dry, or just right, like Goldilocks. All right, so it is really perfect. Um, if it was too dry, it wouldn't have formed a ball and it would be like kind of craggy. I mean, this is a little craggy, but it's definitely not too dry. It feels perfect. It's tacky, but not sticky. A telltale sign of too wet. I mean, it looks really wet, but also there's like a layer of dough under the paddle in a circle. And that's a good sign of too wet. So now we're going to let this go. The completion time is 2.02 and it's 12.43. So now we're just waiting for the ad beep, which should be in about eight or nine minutes from right now. So I'm gonna hang out in my kitchen and wait to add the regular raisins, <coughs> excuse me, golden raisins and currants that I have right here that I tossed in flour. The ad beeps went off a minute ago. I ran back in the kitchen from the living room and I put the first handful in, and I'm gonna add a few more. And close it. Let them get in. For most things, I add the add-ins all at once, but if I do it a little bit gradually, it sort of helps. You can't take too long because this is the end of the first knead when it starts, um, you know, getting ready to do the rise. And I do admit that sometimes I look in there and help it along a little bit. <laughs> Shouldn't have to, but I do sometimes, admittedly. <laughs> We're just gonna take a quick peek to show that the raisin's pretty nicely distributed. See, there it is. Okay, now it's rising. I don't wanna let that heat out. And we have a little more than an hour to go. Well, we've got 26 minutes left on the timer. And it's uh, rising, it's coming along. Got a ways to go though, half an hour is a lot of rising time. And um, after the timer goes off, then I will have a loaf pan all ready to go and we will shape it and let it rise one more time and bake it, yum, yum, yum. 10 minutes to go. Hard to get a, a good um, picture in there. Welcome back. This is the second to last part and really exciting part. So first I have to prepare the loaf pan. Uh, everybody always asks me, what loaf pan do you use and how big it is? You don't have to get expensive loaf pans. I just want, well, this is not super expensive. I don't remember how much it is. This is a Williams Sonoma gold touch loaf pan. It is 10 by five by three. 
They call it a one and a half pound loaf pan, but I put all my two pound recipes in and I get that, get that nice mushroom top, which is what I prefer. All right, so how I prepare my loaf pans is I use a canola oil spray. By the way, if you do get this particular bread pan from William Sonoma, Gold Touch, they don't like you to use Pam brand nonstick spray. I don't know, something about the chemicals are not good for the finish. So what I do is I give it a spray and then I take my piece of parchment and push it in. It doesn't line every inch. It doesn't, you can see the sides are a little exposed. That's okay. So I'm going to now dump this out. And it's not hot because I only use made dough. I didn't bake in it. Got a little dough and a raisin there and a little dough and a raisin there. So you have there are, is dough around the spindles. Even if you can't see it, there it's there. And you never want to not wash in there and your and in between in the holes. So what I do first is I put a little dish soap in, just a drop, fill it with some warm water. There we go. And I don't fill it the whole way or even halfway. I just kind of fill it, fill it so it's covering the spindles. Then I put it aside a little bit later. Okay. When I do wash the bread pan, you never want to get the bottom part where the the um, bolts are that are holding the spindles. You never want to get that wet. You only need to wash the inside and sometimes maybe like the handles right here can get a little dough on them. So obviously you want to wash them. But if you do get this wet, make sure it isn't dripping down. You have to be really, really careful. And by the way, I use a reusable straw brush in the holes of the paddles. You know, when they come off the spindles, there's a hole and I use this. So what I do is lay the bread pan on its side. And well, first I take the paddles out and wash them and put them over here on a towel. And then I wash the inside of the bread pan. No scrubby stuff, no abrasive stuff, please. It'll wreck your nonstick coating. And then I Put the bread pan upside down, I dry it all on the outside, flip it over, dry the inside, put the paddles back in right away. The reason I say to put the paddles back in right away, if this was a live audience, and those of you who've used a bread machine for a while were watching like a Zoom call, and I asked for people to raise their hand, anyone who had started their bread machine where their paddles were sitting over there with their other dry dishes, we'd have 90% of the people who use a bread machine doing that. I've done it, everybody's done it. The way you cannot start your bread machine without the paddles is you wash it, you dry it, you get the paddles back in, and then you and then I let it, you know, I put it over by the bread machine to dry for 24 hours before I put it back in the bread machine just in case of dampness. All right. So I don't roll this out, but I do kind of pat, and I just fold in, fold in. Fold in, fold in. And of course, when you're doing all of this, playing with the dough, raisins will fall off, just poke them back in. It's kind of fun, actually, it's like a game. How many raisins will fall off? The reason I patted it out like that was because I'm trying to avoid having air pockets, which makes holes in the bread. If you get air pockets and you have holes in the bread, it is not the end of the world. No big deal. All right, so now I'm just trying to spread it out a little to be more of a loaf. I have to smell this. Oh, it was cinnamony and raisiny. Isn't it pretty? All right. So I'm going to make sure that my... 
Oh, I saw another one escape. <laughs> and just make sure that this isn't gonna like separate. Make sure everything is pinched together. It really would probably be fine otherwise, but. All right. And I'm gonna pop it in the dough pan. Now, we're gonna take a walk over to the oven. And I'm gonna show you what I do for the final rise. If you have watched a million of my videos, fast forward. <laughs> okay, so you want your oven rack one rung lower than middle. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Having some asthma issues today. So if you have a proof setting, you just hit that proof button, set it for 45 minutes and you're, you're golden. But if you don't, like I don't, what I do is I set my oven to bake at my lowest temperature it will allow me to set, which is 170. Press start, set it for one minute, set a timer for one minute that is. I am not heating the oven all the way to 170. I am merely setting it at the lowest temperature for only one minute. Please listen so you don't make the mistakes that other people make. Use your timers. And if your oven timer is soft enough that you don't hear it when you leave the kitchen, like if I go out and I'm watching TV, I might not hear the timer. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So I bought some of these extra really loud timers or I use the timer on my, app, my Apple Watch or on my iPhone, but set the timer for the one minute. You do not want this oven heating for more than that one minute because it will be too hot and it will kill your yeast and it will not be a nice loaf. You've got eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and done. So I'm turning off the timer and I'm turning off the oven. Please do not leave your oven on. You are not heating it all the way to 170. When you open the oven, don't touch the heating element, but when you stick your arm in here, it just feels like a nice warm day, about 84, 85 degrees, and that is perfect. If you leave your things to rise on the counter, if your oven is warm, uh, kitchen is warm and you just want to do that, cover with some saran wrap, but otherwise I don't cover in the oven because there's no draft. If I'm rising in the oven, I don't ever cover my dough. It doesn't dry out, nothing bad happens. There's no flies that can land on it. There's no, nothing blowing. It's still warm air in there. So I'm going to set the timer for 40 minutes. And then after we turn off the camera, I'm gonna also set this loud, loud, this loud, loud timer that I will hear all the way into the bedroom <laughs> if I needed to. All right, I'll show you what it looks like when it's risen. At the last minute, on a whim, because I can, and because my videographer was still in the kitchen, I decided to show you how I wash my bread pan. Now, I highly suggest that you read your manual to see what the directions are, but I am pretty sure that none of these go in the dishwasher, no matter what brand you have. And I am pretty sure that it would never be a good idea to get the bottom where the bolts are wet. Maybe yours, it's okay, but I ruined my first bread machine's pan by putting it in the sink and letting the bottom get wet. So my bearings froze and there went the bread machine. Although I did use it for 20 years, so that was pretty good. So the first thing I do is dig the paddles out, have them in my hands, and it's been soaking in soapy water. I always have this little bit of soap right here from when I stick the sponge under and then more drips out. So I try to use that and I go in and out of the hole, both directions. This is just my routine, but I like to make sure that my bread pan is very, very clean. And then, as I said before, I put the paddles on a towel, not, now usually I have a bunch of 
dishes that I've washed over here. I did get up and put them all away, but usually I have a whole bunch. That's a good way to lose your paddles. That I never put them over there. I always put them over here. I am an extra, extra cautious human being. I learned that from my parents. So this is what I do because I want my bread pan and my machine to last a long time. So I've got a little dish soap and I just go around and you see how I'm holding it on its side on the sink. If you don't have a middle sink area, you could you know, go over there on one side. Or if you're left-handed or whatever, you go on the other side. I do use the scrubby part very carefully only on the spindle because I know that dough can stick and when it sticks it becomes cement, it grows bacteria and it is a disgusting thing to think about. So I'll do a primary first rinse, make sure I've gotten everything out of there. And you see how careful I'm being not to get the bottom, the sides. I mean, the sides can be, you know, they can be a little wet, and they probably will be a little wet because I'm holding it. And I'm going to rinse it out over here. I can kind of put the water in. Okay, so I'm noticing that on that ridge right there, which I don't think you can really see, but there's like a little thing that sticks out, there is some dough. So I'm going to use my fingernail. It's kind of hard to get to. But, you know, that's a bacteria thing right there. Yucky. But maybe this would help. Oh, I can't get it in there. Wrong angle. I have to do the same thing on the other side. Get it with the sponge. And I think I've got it now. So I'll give another good rinse. We don't want soapy residue in our bread pan. All right. And let it drip out. Put it upside down. And then this is my next part that I do. I really check to make sure I haven't gotten any water in there. Now, if you did get a little water in there, you just make sure you dry it really, really, really well. I don't think that I did in this circumstance. If I bake in the bread machine, the bread pan is a lot harder to wash. There's more stuff stuck to it because it baked in there. So, yeah, I don't see anything in there. Flip it over, dry the inside. I'm not overly concerned about drying this bone dry on the inside because it'll dry, but I do dry it. And then the way I put the paddles in, this just works for my machine, I don't know about yours, is I lay it on top. Oh, well that one I just had at just the right angle, but I'll start over here. So it's not quite on and I go flick. Oh, usually that works, there we go. And the same thing, there we go. And I just kind of flick and wiggle because it only fits on one way. And they should only have they shouldn't be super, super spinny. Like I shouldn't be able to spin it and spin it, spin it. A little bit of play is perfect. All right, that's how I wash my bread pan. So the bread has risen and it will puff up even more when it's baked, I promise you. This particular recipe doesn't ever look like it rises enough and I make cinnamon rolls with it and then all of a sudden it's poofed up. So it will get bigger although it's not as big as my soft, fluffy white bread in comparison. So I am going to get some egg wash ready to egg wash this, and I am going to go preheat my oven to 350 and put it in the oven. If you haven't used egg wash before, egg wash is simply one whole egg and a splash of water. I don't measure it, about a tablespoon of water, and I just use my silicone brush, kind of beat it up till it's, you know, pretty well mixed, which it isn't yet. 
come on. It takes a minute. All right, we're there. We're good enough. Then I'm just going to brush it on. Egg wash helps give a nice golden brown. This would have browned nicely pretty much anyway, but it gives it a little sheen. Just makes it look pretty. And I like my breads to look pretty, don't you? And that's, by the way, why I almost always use the dough course. I much prefer shaping it and baking it in a loaf pan, but there is absolutely no reason why you couldn't bake this bread all the way through on your white or basic recipe in your bread machine. Okay, takes the same amount of time either way. Um, when I use dough course, it's 90 minutes. It's uh, 90 minutes of dough course. It's about 40 minutes of rising, heating up the oven, and about 40 to 45 minutes-ish of baking. It turns out right around the same amount. If I do it in the bread machine, it takes about four hours. So you don't gain any time by doing it either way. So now I've done this and we're just waiting for the oven to heat. So I just wanna say that I do put the recipe below in the description below the video, but sometimes that's a little hard to find. When you look at the actual video, look below. You might have to use an X on the right to close if there's an advertisement, but you should be able to see a bold, the word more, M-O-R-E, and if you click on more, it will show the whole description of this video, including the recipe. In the very beginning, I will give you my website. And that, and it'll be written down, but if you want to write it down now or try to go to it, it's ellensbreadmachinerecipes.com. Ellensbreadmachinerecipes.com. That's Ellens as if there were an apostrophe S, yes, but can't have an apostrophe in a URL. So E-L-L-E-N-S bread machine recipes r e c i p e s dot com and if you go to my website you'll be able to find if you go to the search or you use the full list or any of the ways to find a recipe you will find this recipe and what will happen is the video this video will slide in on the left and then just below there will be a nice big button very easy to spot, you click on that button and it will have the PDF format recipe. You will be able to download it to your computer or print the recipe or just look at it, okay? Um, and that is how you really should get the recipe. If you just wanna look at the description below the video and write down the amounts and go from there, yeah, that's fine too. That's what I used to have to do if you've been with me through other YouTube videos before I had the website, but now all of my recipes are in lovely printable PDF format. So um, ellensbreadmachinerecipes.com. Okay, the bread is in the slightly warmed, or will be in the slightly, oh, going backwards here. I've already risen, the, done the last rise. Um, the bread is going to go into bake as soon as the oven is heated. What I do is I set the timer for half an hour, 25 minutes, half an hour. And by that time, it is as brown as I want it to be. And I tent loosely with foil. I just set foil on top and kind of bend it into that curve that matches the bread. And then I set the timer for another 10, 15 minutes and check the internal temperature. This bread needs to be 200 degrees. One, it's usually between 190 and 200. Oh, my oven's heated. But this one, because it has butter and milk, it's enriched and it should be an egg. So it should get to 200 degrees and you really need an instant need, uh, blah, 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 an instant read thermometer. I'm getting tired. As you can see, this is quite brown and I'm filming myself so I cannot um, do this at the same time, but I just have a sheet of foil and I'm going to just loosely put it over the top when I turn off the camera. See, that's all. Just loosely, just lay it over. So now I'm going to set the timer for about 
10 more minutes and then I'll check the temperature. Been resetting the clock for five or 10 minutes at a time. I believe we are at 200. Yep. That is the only true way to know if your bread is done. Internal temperature. It can look just like this, right? On the outside and still be raw on the inside. Trust me. We cut many loaves of bread open, excited, only to find that it was raw and gooey in the middle. I'm gonna go turn off that oven and turn off my timer. There we go. All right, I don't need those bits anymore. Oh, I might need those bits. So this is the, the reason I use the parchment. Ta-da, <laughs> it's so easy to get it out. It's worth it to me. It may not be worth spending the money on the parchment to you. It's worth it to me. It's, it's a, just a, a personal preference. You can, if you like, you can certainly use your mitts, pick up the bread pan, turn the bread out of the pan. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I did that for years, but this is just a little gift I give to myself, I guess you could say. I'm gonna turn this. Well, I guess I could turn it all the way around so you can see. And see how the egg wash gave it that beautiful sheen? See how shiny it is? So it's ready now. It's, it's done. But since it's a video, and sometimes on videos I wanna do something a little bit fancy, I'm going to make a glaze. And this is basically the same glaze as I use for cinnamon rolls, although my videographer and I always argue I like just a skinny bit of a glaze and he wants a thick, glazy frosting. Not quite a frosting, but somewhere in between a thin glaze and a frosting. So anyway, we'll see what we come up with today. I just really want to pour it out. I don't want to spread it out with a spatula. I'm going to start. This is just powdered sugar. And I didn't measure it, it's probably a little over a cup. You don't need to measure it. Just pour some in, you could do it in a bowl, a mixing bowl, glass measuring cup. It, it's, it's not crucial what you do it in. Although I did think of doing it in here so you could see what I was doing a little bit. So I'm gonna pour in some milk and it kind of implodes, <laughs> kind of fun. I'm just gonna, I use a mini whisk yeah, you could use a little spatula, you could use a fork. It's not really a big deal. Just mixing it up. If it has little powdered sugar lumps, I don't really care if that bothers you. Try to push them out, I don't know. So I think that's a good consistency right there. Okay, the husband wants it thicker. Oh my God, you can see by the look on his face. I'll try putting in a little more powdered sugar. I get added powdered sugar after. We'll see what happens. And again, this glaze is just because I'm being slightly fancy. If you're just throwing this in the freezer or serving it for breakfast tomorrow morning and you know it's just for adults and you don't really need the glaze you don't want the extra sugar this is not a necessary part but I just thought I would do it because it's fun and it's fancy all right and I am not the most artistic graceful person and by the way I don't know if you noticed that I have a big piece of parchment underneath my rack. Well, cause this is gonna drip all over the place and this will hopefully save some of the mess that I can just roll up. I may have made too much, but you can see how it's all dripping down the sides. 
I need a lazy Susan. I can't see what's happening on the other side. Does it look good? A little more? All right. Let me, well, I can't really turn it, but. Better? All right. Yep. I know if my friend Bruce was watching this, my friend Joanne's husband, Bruce, no last names, no other identification. <laughs> I know that if he was watching this, this would be totally his thing. He loves cinnamon raisin bread. So I know it's wasted a lot, unfortunately. It all dripped up, not all dripped down, but a lot of it dripped down. I hate to waste that, but I don't really have anything else to put it on. I guess I could grab a spatula and kind of spread some on the parts that didn't get any, but I think it's okay. So I should probably have made about a half the amount as I did. I've never glazed a bread before. This was something new I did today. So we're gonna leave this to cool for a good three hours. And in three hours time, which will be well after our dinner, because it's already uh, after 12, I mean, after 4 p.m. today. We'll leave it to cool for three hours and then we will slice it and I'll show you what the inside looks like. Well, it's about three hours later. The bread should be completely cooled inside. Feels nice and cool on the outside. I'm going to make a slice. I'm kind of excited because I've never glazed a bread like this. Okay, so we can see the crumb. And it's really mostly a white bread, but it does have the cinnamon and the cinnamon makes it a little more brown. The raisins are pretty evenly distributed. I am quite pleased. Just wanna cut a little more. And make it look pretty in this bread bowl thing that my friend Sheila gifted to me when I visited at her house. It was one of those things where it was on her table and I admired it. She got this look in her eye and she said, I want you to take it home with you. I was visiting her in another state. So I'm just gonna put that in there, put that in there, put that in there. I should have sliced a few more, but you get the idea. And we will have the taste test. I'm just gonna taste a little bite because you know what happens. I have to talk to you and tell you how good it is and then I'm chewing with my mouth full and then I can make myself choke. So I'm just going to take one tiny bite. And of course, what's not to love? It is plenty cinnamony. It has lots of the raisins and golden raisins and currants and they're all over the place. But it is delicious. Enjoy for your morning toast with butter. You could even add more cinnamon sugar. I would even eat, I would eat peanut butter on this. That would be my first choice to have peanut butter on this. If you like this, if you like this recipe, I have sticky hands here. Ah. <laughs> I, if you'd like to make this recipe, the my website is listed below the video. As I said, look for the word more in bold, click on it, but you don't have to do that. It's Ellen's Bread Machine Recipes.com. Ellen's E L L E N S Bread Machine Recipes, plural recipes, not just one recipe. Com. When you go to the website, all you need to do is put in cinnamon raisin or glazed cinnamon raisin or even just the word cinnamon and this recipe will come up 
I haven't, when I put it on YouTube, I have to give it a name and I think I'm gonna call it something goofy like glazed triple treat cinnamon raisin bread for bread machines or something crazy like that. But you'll find it easily. All you will need to put in in the search of the website is cinnamon. In fact, you'll only have to put C-I-N probably and it will pop up. And when you click on it, it'll, the video, this video you're watching will slide in from the side. And then just below that is a button where you can either view, download or print the PDF and nothing costs a thing at all. I hope, I just like to share my recipes with you. So I hope you enjoy this. Let me know if you make it. You may comment to me on YouTube. You may follow me on Facebook. You may, um, What's that other thing? Email me, hello. And you can email me. There is a contact email right on my website. Very easy to find. Thank you for watching.